In today's tutorial, let's learn how to do the step ladder afghan together. This is a cool little stitch and you can use it for many other things. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today's tutorial we're going to learn how to do the step ladder afghan. This is a really quick one. There's only one page of instructions and in today's tutorial I'm going to take you through all the lessons in order to get you to do the repeat pattern so that you can do this afghan just like so. While this afghan is targeting the festive and holiday season you can also use different colors in order to make it really kind of cool and this is called the step ladder stitch and it's actually a lot more simpler than you may realize. So let's quickly review this pattern. You may get confused on what you're reading here for the amount of yarn that you're going to need. You will notice that this yarn is available or was available in two different sizes. You had the 300 gram which is the big size just like so and then there is a smaller one that's 150 gram which is half the size. So you'll notice that the 300 gram is first and then it says the smaller size. So when you're looking at the sizes amount of yarn that you'll need it says olive and it will say two or three balls. Okay, two or three and what this represents if you're going to use the 300 gram you only need two and if you're going to use the 150 gram you are going to need three. So that's how you would read this particular part of the instruction. Now the one thing that I really loved about this whole afghan is that everything repeats back from the start. So it's like a typewriter. We never ever turn our work and go on the other side and this is what makes this pattern so easily. Now before we begin the actual tutorial element to it you should know that I did a crochet diagram so that I could follow it for myself. I've taken a scan of this and this will be available in the more information of this video. I'll provide this uh, particular PDF on my website thecrochetcrowd.com and you can access this if you prefer to read the diagrams. For me this is what I need to do in order to teach you because in actual fact it seems like there's a lot of instructions but when you break it down like so it's actually a lot more easy. Now while the instructions tell you that you need to chain 87 to begin, if you want to change the sizes no matter if it's a baby size or even bigger, the multiples on this are chaining of 5. So what you want to do on this is that you can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then keep doing that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then once you get to the size chain that you want, so if you want to lay it down on something else that you want to match it to, you just have to add 2 chains at the very end of your chain. So just keep on multiples of 5 and then you can make this any size that you wish and then multiples of 5 allow you to keep repeating the pattern and it's quite seamless at the same time. So I'm going to be using today an 8 millimeter a size L crochet hook today. You'll notice that the instructions call for a 9 millimeter. I believe that's what it says 9 millimeter and uh, that's a size M. I could even go as far as a 10 millimeter and that 10 millimeter uh, would be a size N as well. So that's uh, up to you on what you want to do. Remember the bigger the hook the actual more of the um, uh, the stretch will be as well as that the stitches will look a lot more open. So it's up to you what you prefer to use. So let's begin. If you want to follow the instructions as per written you can chain 87. The size afghan that you're going to get when you do that is 43 inches by 55 inches if you follow it to the T. So what I'm going to tell you today is chain in multiples of 5. So you can follow the instructions but I'm going to do my, my chaining of 5 because I want to just do a smaller sample to show you how to do it. So remember that the first one on the hook never counts as 1. So we have 1, 2 and 3, 4 and 5. So there's one set of 5 and I want to do that again. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. There's two sets. I don't have to keep a count on how many sets there are. Just keep counting in sets of 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and then once you get to the size chain so if you're satisfied with the size chain just add 2 extra at the very end before starting row number 1. So I'm going to add 2 and now that's ready for row number 1. Let's go for row number 1. We need to count back to the 4th chain from the hook. So we go 1, 2, 3 and 4 and what we want to do is that we want to double crochet and I usually do it on the back hump of the chain. So just turn over the chain and get the back hump of it. It makes it for a nicer finish at the very end and just do a double crochet. And I want you to do a double crochet in each one of the chains going all the way across your afghan chain. Okay, so just one double crochet into each. Please do that all the way and I'll meet you on the other side. 
When you get to the other side you should have a multiple of five. So if I counted these out loud one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five, you should end up with equal numbers of five. Okay, so that's how you would do it. Once you're at this side I need you to fasten off. So just take your scissors and trim your yarn because we are not ever turning this project. So we're never gonna turn it around and go back in the other direction. So what I want you to do is take this straggler and I'm only gonna show it once in this video is that just weave it in to some of these stitches. So just across the top of the chain just weave it in because when you go into this in the next row you can uh, basically the next row is gonna tighten onto itself when you weave it in just like this. Okay, so do that each and every time and then you don't need to worry about it at this point. So your biggest thing is that once you get this weaving done you never want to kind of lose the point of you know where you started and stopped. So we wanna make sure that they're always starting on the turning chain which is chain three over here. So let's move along to row number two. So let's begin row number two. I'm going to start off with the slip knot in my hands first to do the fastening on. This is how I prefer to do it. It's up to you and if you have a different method. So what you want to do is you want to join it at the beginning of the chain three. So this is where we finished on this side. So this side is where we had started before we finished on this side. So that's where I wanna go back to. So we're always going to be like a typewriter going back and forth on the same side. We're never gonna turn this project. So just uh, grab the yarn and pull it through like so and I want you to lay the straggler down on top of the line as we go to crochet. So we're going to simply just chain three, one, two, and three and we want to come into the back um, loop only and we want to always do the back loops on this entire project. This is what gives that that um, really kind of refined look and so basically if you don't know what a back loop is is that each one of the stitches are made up of two strings. So the string that's closest to you is called the front loop and the string farthest away from you is the back loop. So we want to double crochet and just dive in between the strings only grab the back one and double crochet. So we're only ever going to double crochet in the back loops for this entire project. Once you do the first one it's pretty obvious and you're on row number two you're just going to do the back loops of each one of these stitches going all the way across and once you get to the other side you are going to trim your uh, trim and fasten off. So do that all the way across. When you get mostly all to the way back you notice that straggler that we cut. We want to make sure that when we go into the very final few stitches where that where we weaved in those edges that we dive in but we also grab that straggler that's in behind and so it'll trap it underneath this row permanently so it never comes out on you. So when you dive in just go in and then if the straggler is available to you just go underneath the straggler as well at the same time and then that will trap it into position. And then once you get to the all the way to the final stitch okay you want to be able to fasten off and weave in this edge. Okay so I have one more to go. If you feel more comfortable you can count your stitches all the way across. You still, still at all times should be in multiples of five. So just like so. So weave this off and we're gonna start a new color on this side once again. So let's start our next color and we are just gonna go back to the start and I'm going to be using red for this one. So this is the first time we're going to do the step ladder part of what we're doing. So this is uh, row number three. So we want to attach to the top of the beginning chain three. Okay so we finished over here. We're back at the very beginning and we want to attach. So just uh, put your hook in, grab the yarn and pull through like a slip stitch and just leave that straggler down on top of the line. To start this row we are going to chain three, one, two, and three and we are going to put in in the next three double crochets we're going to do a back uh, loop double crochet. Okay so make sure you get that straggler trapped in a position so just go around that straggler as well and that will get it right in underneath the stitches. So you wanna do three in a row. So each one of the step ladders has five stitches. Four stitches are by itself and then the fifth one is the one that drops down into the this row in the green. So how we do that, that's called a, a double treble. Okay, so what we want to do is that we wanna follow it down and we wanna get the same stitch two rows down. Okay, so how we do that is that we come and we wrap the hook twice. So it's a double treble. So we wrap the hook three times. I apologize and we just look at this stitch and follow it down and so this is going to be the fifth stitch over. So one, two, three, four, and five and you wanna get the fifth front post. It's harder to start like this 
at this point but once you get into the rhythm you'll be able to look down very easily. So I'm still making my way back to the top of that stitch. So it, dra it drops down quite significantly just like so. And so basically you are going to skip that same stitch on the upper side here and just go to the second one over and you are going to do a double crochet in the back post. Okay and you do that for the next four. So one, two, three, and four. So now that the fourth is in we want to drop down again. So what I just kind of look over is that you see where you've dropped down here you can just skip four down here and then just go to the fifth to make it work. So a double treble is wrapping three times. One, two, and three. Okay skipping over and you wanna get the one, two, three, four, and five. This counting over gets a lot easier in time. So we just want to start coming all the way back up. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, keep pulling through two until you're back to the top like so. So we then skip that same stitch in behind and go to the next one over and we are going to double crochet again the next four into the back loop. And on this particular row we're going to finish with the double treble down at the bottom and it will be your last stitch if you're keeping them in multiple sets of five. Okay so this is the second last one. So the last one is going to be a double treble down Okay, so you wrap the hook three times and then you can see one, two, three, four. This is your last one, the fifth. Going around the front post, pull through two all the way back. And that's it. So all you're just gonna do at this point is just weave in your edge, or sorry, we, uh, cut your yarn and weave it off and then we're going to start with the next color and I'm gonna bring green back into the picture. So this is what it looks like right now. We've just completed green. So round number or row number four is the only row that starts off really weird. So we're going to be repeating rows three through seven all the way for the remainder of the pattern and you'll finish on row number seven as your last row when you get to the top if you're keeping them what it's asking you to do. So let's begin to do our green. Start off with a slip knot and number four starts off really weird but it makes sense in just a moment. So we're going to join it to the beginning of the cha chain three. Remember we finished off over here. We're back at the start on this side. Just attach it like I've already shown before. And now this time instead of chaining three and it's the only time you're not going to chain three is that you only chain one and that does not count as a stitch. So what we need to do is that this time we're going to start off with the double treble in the front post down here. So instead of playing in the green we're gonna move up one row. We're always gonna play two rows down below. So remember double treble is wrapping three times. Coming around the front post, okay it'll be the very first one and we treble our way back to the top. So yarning over and pulling it through two and two and two all the way back to the top. So that's considered your first stitch. So the next four and I'm gonna trap the straggler down underneath. The next four are just double crochets in the back post or the back loop sorry. Double crochet back loop for the next four. So there is your, your groups of five. So one's a treble and two are, are four are doubles. Okay and coming back. So this one here is the treble but this time it's only gonna be a back post double. So next time, so that now that we have our four in, the next one is going to be a double treble and it's going to be directly beside this one. So this one you don't really need to start counting. You just kind of look where everything is going on top. So we're going to double treble. So wrap three times, coming down two rows below and just get the one. So if you kind of lay it in front, you can kind of see where it is. It's kind of this one right here. Okay and if you're not sure just look down this one here and just follow it down and you can find it. Okay and treble your way back to the top and then you're going to double crochet again back loop only. So you skip that one that you just went over and then just go back loop double crochet for the next four. So this is shifting over your double crochets by starting at a different spot at the beginning of the row and coming down at a different spot. So this is the double treble there. This time it's a back post double crochet. So then the next one is a double treble. So wrap three times. Okay come down. Okay 
and you can either just count over one, two, three, four, and this is your fifth one over here, or you just kind of look it up. You may just want to count right in the very beginning just to get yourself organized. But eventually it'll become old hat to you. Come back to the top and you're gonna skip that next one and double crochet back loop only. So we are basically just finishing off with double crochets here. And the reason why is that basically you can see, and I'll stop in just a sec, this is the last stitch, is that the double trebles are moving over this direction. So if I moved over one, the next one would be after this point, but it's already the edge, so I can't go any further. So that's why you only see four double crochets out there, because we had actually already started on this side. So what was supposed to be over on this side is actually just started on this side, if that makes any sense to you. Make sure that you fasten off at this point and let's begin row number five. So let's begin our next one. We're going to start off with a white this time. Again, the colors are pretty subjective to you. So you're looking at the uh, pattern here. We started with the double treble on the last row, which was row number four, which is the only one that kind of starts off that way. And now we're ready for number five. So we come at the top of the double treble because that's the first one and we join this new one. So this is number five. So just join it and then chain three. So one, two, and three. So that counts as your very first one. So the next one is a double treble down into the red section this time. So that's two rows down. So wrap and wrap and wrap. So for a double treble, go to the second one over. Okay, so just follow it down and just go to the second one over and double treble yourself back up. Okay, so now that you've done that one, so now you can just do back loop only, double crochets. You skip over the one that was supposed to be this treble and you back loop, double crochet for the next four. One, two, three, and four. So four should be the uh, top of the next double treble that you run into here. So then the next one is right directly beside it. So let's double treble down and go to the one right beside it under in the red. I'm starting to get my bearings straight on this. Double treble back up. We skip the one that is the double treble and behind and just go to the second one over and we're going to double crochet back loop only for the next four. And if my counts are right, my fourth should always be over a double treble from the row below, which is right. Okay, let's double treble down, so wrap, wrap, wrap. Again, coming down, so I just kinda wanna measure it over. Second one over. Again, if you have to take your time to look at that and get your bearings, that's up to you. Okay, you skip the one that you just went over. Okay, and this time there is only going to be three. Okay, so one, two, and three. So just double treble or double crochet and back loop. And I knew that there was only going to be three because in the row below we finished off with four double crochets in a row. So this time there should only be three left. And the reason for it is that you started off with the double crochet here before treble. So you have your three and there's your fourth right starting on the other side. So fasten that off and let's move back to using red. And this will move up to us to row number six. Okay, let's start row number six together. Start off with a slip knot and go back to the start again. And we're back here. So this is where I finished this side. This is the new side or this is where we began. So let's attach to the top of the beginning chain three. attach everything. Okay, and just lay that straggler down so you can trap it underneath. Chain three please. One, two, and three. And then the first one here is a back post double crochet. And the, and I can tell that instantly because this is a treble. So I can't treble over something that's got already a treble there. And so then the next one now is a treble which is gonna come into the green section this time. So wrap and wrap and wrap. Okay, coming over and just get into the green. So you're just always shifting over by one. 
So between three and seven is the repeat pattern. So by the time you get to seven and you finish that you go back to three because these basically will be reset back to where they should be to start all over again. Once you get that done just back loop double crochet and skip the one that you were just on and just do the next four. So there should be four in a row and the fourth one should finish on the double treble which it does. So I know my counts are right and so the next one is going to be the treble. So wrap, 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 come back down to the green. Just treble my way back up. Okay, skip the one that you were just on and then double crochet into the next four into the back post or back loop only. This is row number six. So it gets easier as you get further into the project your eyes are gonna go where they want to go instead of having to fight for it and then treble again into the next one because we're in trouble here. Okay this is row number six. So at the very end there's only two stitches left this time because we're shifting over one more. So that means that there's one less stitch to worry about. Which makes sense and I'll explain that just to you in a moment. Let me get my last one in. So I have two double crochets over here. I started off with two before the treble. So that gives, that keeps me in balance. So let's do row number seven which is uh, the final row before you start coming back to the very beginning on row number three again in order to start repeating the pattern all over again. Let's begin row number seven which is the final before the repeat of going from three to seven. So this is the, the final repeat. So come out onto the top of the chain three again where we started and attach your next color. Okay once you got your color on chain three, one, two, three. So you're going to double cr uh, our double crochet in the next two back loops only. Keep that straggler down on the top so you can trap it underneath. And so this is the double treble here so that I know the next one should be a double treble. So wrap and wrap and wrap. Okay coming this time into the white. Okay back to the top I skip that same stitch go to the next one over and do double crochet, double, uh, uh, double crochet sorry. I'm getting confused between double trebles double crochets, <laughs> double anything. <laughs> so it's easy to do it. To say it all out loud is kind of crazy. So I'm right over the double treble here so I know the next one has to be a double treble into the white. Okay and then I just double crochet. I skip that one there. Go to the next one over. Double crochet to the next four. Okay. So then I got my four in so double treble again. Come into the second last one because it's on the very edge this time. Well it's second one over from the edge. Double treble and then I uh, double crochet into the final. And that will conclude off row number seven. So basically when we started at row number three you'll notice that the double trebles are right on the edge. So basically the next one row number three that you would start is that the treble will end up on the edge. Therefore you can follow this repeat pattern going all the way just like so. So what does this puppy look like on the back? Let me just trim the yarn and show you what that looks like at the end. So that's what it looks like at the back side. So you, if you prefer the stripes you could do it that way but if you want a little more decor you can do it this way as well. So that concludes your lesson on how to do the step ladder afghan. Again you can just change your hook and your yarn in order to do this with any stitches as long as you keep it in multiples of five that you'll always have this diagonal running up and when you have a wider surface like it shows in the photo is that this will be even be more grand. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarn Inspirations as well as the crochet crowd.com. Have a fabulous day and we'll see you real soon. Bye bye.